Hi, this is Mitch Hauschel at Maximum Training Solutions. Today I want to talk a little bit about anterior hip pain. It's interesting, I talk with a lot of my friends who are professionals around the country and we all seem to be getting these patients that have this kind of generalized anterior hip pain, maybe one side, maybe both sides, um, but a lot of people are, are trying to go in on them surgically thinking it's a, a labral tear or something going on there. But a lot of them really when they go and see the orthopedic surgeon are coming back with a completely normal MRI arthrogram. And so then it comes down to what, what's really going on. And uh, a lot of this stuff I think you could, could lump into kind of a general diagnosis of uh, femoral acetabular impingement or FAI. And uh, um, I think it's a little bit of a general term and when you look at the true diagnosis there's several different types and you can get very specific with it, don't get me wrong. But from a rehab perspective, most of it really comes back to core instability and the hip flexors turning on when they're not supposed to. So if things around the hip and the pelvis and the core aren't working the way we want it to, they get into these deep hip flexion angles, they're going to get impingement on that hip flexor. Or even if they don't get that true impingement, they're getting that anterior hip pain because that hip flexor is getting overworked and not doing what it's designed to do, gets inflamed and irritated. So I want to talk a bit uh, about three pretty uh, simple remedial exercises that I'll start off with with a lot of our patients that come in with this, this anterior hip pain. And then uh, those exercises you would bridge into more complex exercises when you, they're feeling a little bit better, you get into some get ups and some uh, lunges and, and squatting patterns and things like that. So first exercise we're gonna talk about is, is the core engaged leg lowering. And I'm gonna have Jordan go ahead and lay on her back here. And you guys have probably seen me do this before. It's really one of my go-to exercises because it does so many great things for us. So I'm gonna use the band today. Uh, you can also use kettlebells, you can do a sandbag, you can do a lot of different things, but the whole key is to making sure that we are um, loading that core in a way that we get it to stabilize the pelvis. And our, our bodies are designed so we should have an anticipatory contraction before we go into any other movements. But unfortunately, a lot of our uh, athletes, a lot of our general population, don't have that anticipatory contraction. So uh, instead of the core turning on like it's supposed to before other things happen, the hip flexors want to turn on to stabilize the pelvis. That's where we get into a lot of these anterior hip issues. So by actually just using the band or, or something else to engage that core, we teach it to turn on, then the hip flexors automatically relax. They get to do the job they're supposed to do. So I'm going to have her start with her legs straight up in the air and then she's going to take uh, her hands down to her side. Right there, the core has to turn on. So her core is engaged, hip flexors are relaxed, now she's going to lower her leg down, bring it back up, okay, arms up, and back down. So it's a great exercise for training the core. Also a great exercise for training an active straight leg raise uh, movement pattern. If your athlete struggles with that, we can work on some mobility restrictions along those lines. Um, but I really do like it because it really changes, trains the sequencing pattern that we're looking for. So a lot of people ask me, why do I have them bring their hands up in between each rep? Well, that's because I'm trying to train this sequence of we have to get the core to fire first and then the legs can go in that movement. Jordan struggled there a little bit, but uh, that's normal. Uh, we're just trying to get that pattern down. Okay, so I like that much more than just bringing the arms down and keeping it down on the side. So next exercise I want to go to is a glute bridge. And I commend a lot of you guys, you're doing a great job of, of trying to integrate the bridge. It is such a great ex uh, exercise because it gets the glutes engaged and that's so important for, for keeping our athletes healthy but also for performance. But one of the issues I see is, especially if we're tied up front, our athletes are going to bridge and they're really not using their glutes, they're using their low back to do a lot of the work. That's actually, you know, it could be detrimental to our athletes and cause some low back pain, um, but it's also really not giving the performance that we want. So by activating the core using the band or kettlebell or, or sandbag, whatever you have, once again, we get the core to activate and then we get low back to relax. So I'm going to have her take her arms down to her side and then from here she's going to bridge those hips up. She may hold it for 5, 10 seconds, whatever it is you prefer to do with it. Bring the hips back down and then arms up. Okay, go again. Good. So we're teaching that sequence again. That's the key here is we need to teach the sequence, teach them how to separate their core from their hip flexors. Okay. Last exercise we're going to do here is I'm going to have her flip over and we're going to go into 
a plank position with a march. Um, similar to kind of a mountain climber, but I like to control this a lot more than a mountain climber. A lot of people use the mountain climber for more of a cardio-based exercise, a metabolic exercise. I'm looking for control here. So go ahead and hop up in that plank. Now I really want a good plank here. So I want her squeezing the shoulder blades together, pack that head in, neck nice and tight. Now she's going to pull one knee up, heel up, toe up. Okay, good. And she's not going to touch. She's going to let it hover, bring it back, go to the other side. So right now we've got this core really loaded and we're teaching Keep going here side to side. We're really teaching how we get those legs to work independent of the core and really starting to work on some of the sequencing and then from there we bridge it into the more complex exercises. So when you have an athlete that's got some of this generalized uh, anterior hip pain or if you yourself suffer from that a little bit, try some of these exercises out.